What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? Uh, what do I have for you today? Um, I think today I'm going to talk about um, meditation and yoga and why it's so important. Um, I personally find a lot of peace in meditation and yoga. Uh, I think when I originally started doing it, or when I heard about it, I didn't think it was something for me. I thought it was something that was um, a lot different than really what it was. But I find, uh, especially in this game, being so mental as it is, I think um, you know having something to uh, find peace is something that uh, the reason why I like to do it, I think it's important for me to talk about it because I think um, kids watch us play and they watch us perform and they think this game is, is all physical. So they constantly spend time in the weight room, constantly spend time running. Um, you know, I think they think we don't sleep at all. And um, I'm trying to slowly uh, unravel that. That's, you know, I definitely get my sleep. I definitely meditate a lot. I definitely do yoga because stretching is a part of the game. I think the reason why I've stayed as healthy as I have been and been out on the field as, as much as I have been is because uh, I, I do yoga all the time. I do it at least once a week. Um, you might find me somewhere in Bellevue in one of these studios. Um, and it's fun. It's very peaceful. And it helps me kind of clear my mind with uh, a lot of the stuff that's going on in my life, a lot of stuff that's going on in the world. Um, it's, it's good to have that to, to step away from. So uh, kids, if you guys are listening, I encourage you guys to look into meditation. I encourage you guys to look into yoga. And feel free to reach out to me if you uh, need me to point you in the right direction. What kind of yoga do you do? Uh, I do hatha. Uh, and I do high yoga. I like high yoga because you get deeper into the stretching. So that's my preference. You can start with yoga. Hot yoga is a little bit intense. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't encourage people to jump right into hot yoga. But, uh, you know, as you progress, that's kind of what I would, I would uh, suggest. What's your meditation? Say it one more time. Your, your meditation? Uh, I like to meditate after the games, before the games. Um, I'll meditate on Wednesdays. I try to do it every day. I'm not perfect. Um, but I didn't really know how to, again, meditation was a, a thing that, I thought that you had to sit on like a rock and cross your legs and, you know what I mean, be in this uh, crazy space. But, um, you know, it started with an app. I just had an app kind of guide me through um, through uh, meditation. And once I got comfortable with that, uh, I started to do my own things. And I started looking up stuff on YouTube because you can do a lot of things with YouTube nowadays. And, and um, it's kind of grown from there. Um, so now we'll take you guys' football questions because I'm sure you have a lot of them. It looked like there was quite a bit of frustration from several of your teammates in the field after plays, uh, body language related stuff. Uh, um, then there were comments after the game about questions with the scheme. But were, were those issues stemming from the Vikings doing some stuff that maybe you guys didn't feel like you were fully prepared for? Or were there just a few plays where guys just weren't in the right spots? I think uh, I would, I would address the second part first. I think when you look at Trey's and uh, DJ Reed's comments after the game, I think that is um, also the media as well. You know, we got to be conscious of that because we take a snapshot of what they said and turn it into kind of everything. I think on um, either Trey's or DJ Reed's, you guys specifically asked them about a screenplay. And, you know, sometimes they get you on a screenplay from a um, scheme's perspective. That that's, happens throughout the whole game. And so you can't take that one bit and apply it to the whole game. And I think, you know, obviously it's your guys' job to try to figure out what's going on. So I don't fault you guys for that, but I think it's important to put out the whole um, clip and what was asked. Um, but that being said, obviously, when stuff is not going your way, you have frustrations. And sometimes it shows. This is a very... Uh, a game that's played with passion. And so when stuff doesn't go right, then the passion comes out. But that doesn't um, stay away from anything. I've been here for 10 years, and you guys have seen who I've played with for a long time. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen Sherm, Mike B, myself, um, Cam. All these guys have emotions at some point during the game. It's just the process of trying to be great. You want to be good every single play you step out there. And so when there's something that happens that doesn't go your way, 
you know, I would think it's it's wrong for you not to be upset about it. So guys expressing their frustrations or having frustrations, um, I think that's a part of the game. I think it's a part of um, the beauty of wanting to be great. Uh, but we got to be better. And I think that's simple as that. We have to be better. We have to uh, communicate better. Um, we know this. Um, I'm, you know, obviously there's there's things every year that um, get us in the beginning of the season, and we figure out a way to stop it. I think a year or two years ago, uh, they were running a lot of fly plays, and they were getting outside on edge because our, um, you know, the way we have it, we have our the end men our line of scrimmage sit very tight to the line of scrimmage, so the teams were seeing that, and we're running around screen plays, and once we got a hold of that, um, you know, they stopped it, but. Uh, you know, this is something that we have to get a hold on. When you put stuff on film, this is a copycat league. And so they're going to, every team, if they don't have that play that you messed up on, they'll put that play in. And so it's on us to make sure that we see it better, see it faster, which I think if you watch the game, we, we read it a lot better in the second half. And we just have to make sure that we that's consistent. You, uh, you was it scheme, Bobby, about, uh, or was it players not doing the scheme properly? Or? Say it again. Was the issue scheme or players not doing the scheme properly or the Vikings just out scheming? What, what, what tended to be the systematic problem? Now? I think it's, um, it, I think at the end of the day, it starts with the players. I mean, obviously, coaches try to put you in the best position possible, but when you run a play, you, you are, as a player, you're supposed to execute that play. And so, um, you know, we have not been perfect on, on all of our stuff. And so I think that's the growing pains of just getting better each week and, and the good teams get better. Um, you know, it's very early in the season, so we ha it's up to us and leadership and myself to make sure we communicate and make sure we play better, and we will. He talks about the, that play KJ made against the, the whatever it was, the, the fourth down stop was a few weeks ago on Monday mm -hmm. night, and he wasn't supposed to be there. And I feel like that's what a lot of veterans can be able to do, I operate outside the scheme and make plays necessarily. That they're not designed to make. When did, when, when did you be able to start make those type of plays? Um... Realistically, I did it as a rookie, but I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I would probably say maybe uh, year two or year three, um, give or take. And I think it's just, you know, when you watch a lot of film and you study the game, you just take chances. And the I think the growth of the your chance taking is, um, you know, when you're a young player, you're just taking a chance and you're hoping for something good to happen. As you get older and you get more experienced, it, that your, your chances are more education. They're, they're more educational chances. And so you understand that you can take a chance that the, the risk, you know, the risk for KJ in that position, that particular play was um, very low. You know, the worst thing that could happen is maybe he missed the tackle. But as you, if you see the play, the gap was wide open. There was nobody in the gap. And, you know, there was an edge defender on the outside. So there was no chance of that ball cutting back to where he was leaving. So um, I think that comes from film study. That comes from understanding the defense, like the back of your hand, and knowing where you can make your plays. And you know, I think we're still growing to get to that. I asked that because that's one of the questions Trey was asked after the game about, the, he called it a gray area between doing the assignment versus operating outside of scheme when you see something like, like KJ yeah. saw on that play. Um, do you think that's something that could change what's going on with the defense and more instinctual plays like that that are outside of the scheme? Um, that just comes from experience. You know what I mean? I think a lot of that, if, if you look at guys like Sherm and guys like Cam and myself and Earl and KJ and Cliff and Mike Bennett, a lot of those plays happen from, um, a crazy amount of film study. And again, understanding when to take risks and when not, you know, there was a specific play where, um, you know, Sherm picked the ball from like the opposite hash, but his he's in three coverage. He's the third player on the right side or the left side. And once his play, uh, once his guy goes underneath, it eliminates. He don't have no responsibility so he can go and help out. And so he climbs and he's always, he was very good at that. Every time he did that, he climbed. So, you know, I knew if I was on Sherm's side and I had an over route, there was a good chance that I could leave this route because I know Sherm was coming. But that came from playing with somebody for a long time and trusting that he was going to be there. And so I think a lot of it is just these guys, you know, us just getting out there and trusting one another and having a little bit more experience and 
you know, taking those chances, knowing the other guy's going to be there for you. I was going to say, as, as sort of the leader of the defense and all that, do you feel the need to talk to everybody this week about it? Or do you uh, I mean, I spoke to everybody. I feel like uh, we, you know, we're all on the same page. Um, I think that was the most important thing. Communication is definitely the, the number one thing. And, um, you know, we just got to get out of our, our way. These last two games, defensively, we've been our, in our own way, whether it's um, the penalties or our execution. We need to get out of our own way. We have the talent. We have the players. We have everything we need to be a great defense. Um, we just need to get out of our way. When it comes to Jimmy Garoppolo, how does he compare this year to last year, what you saw in film, because he was hurt most of last year? Um, he's definitely getting the ball out fast. Um, so the hits that he's taking are not much um, because he's they're, they're, um, the, the plays that they're running are designed to make sure that he gets the ball out of his hands very fast. I think he might have the fastest um, time in the league thus far this season. So. That's the thing, you know, they, they're going to get the ball out of his hands fast. He's making very quick decisions, and his decisions are on point at, right now. But, you know, we have to find a way to get in his face. We have to find a way to, um, you know, apply pressure, get him off the spot. And, um, you know, we look forward to that challenge. We've seen Robert Kandite out there the last couple of weeks. Certainly he's got a lot of energy. What else does he bring energy. to the pack? Besides energy, um, probably more energy. If energy is first, then energy is second. Enthusiasm is third. Um, he's a fun guy to play with. Um, he loves his game. Uh, he definitely tells you he loves life. Um, he is uh, a, a ball of energy, and um, he's very strong, very aggressive, and you know he plays on the opposite side of the opposite team's um, uh, backfield, which you you loved as a linebacker. We know you guys try to treat every week the same, treat it like a championship opportunity. In a week like this, you're coming off two losses, you've got your first division game. Does the vibe feel any different, even if you're not necessarily trying to? Um, I mean, yeah, obviously the vibe's different just because, you know, we're trying to – You, it's been a long time, I think, since we've lost two in a row. And – um, going into two divisional games in a potential short week, not potential, a short week after this game, um, you want to make sure you put your, your best foot forward. And again, make sure that you do everything possible to make sure that you are not, you, you are not the reason or you're not in your way of success, you know, especially from a defensive standpoint. So um, we'll definitely uh, treat this game like we normally treat this game. Uh, but we need to have more focus than we've had. We need to make sure that we're locked in and we make sure we're ready for a battle because this team is coming off a loss as well. So, you know, you got two hungry teams that want to win. Um, we're going into their, their home, and, uh, you know, I, I, I have confidence that we'll come out victorious. Did you think there was any chance that he, he would come back here? That he doesn't bring it back? Yeah, I thought, you know, until kind of all this stuff happened, I thought he was, you know, on his way here. And then everything kind of happened, which kind of, um, slowed the process back down, but um, you know, at the end of the day, I think he made the the best decision for himself. Um, I'm excited that he's back. I think the the game of football needs Richard Sherman um, because of just what he brings, his mind, um, what he will and will not say. And so uh, I look forward to uh, his podcast. He better have me on his podcast, or else uh, I still know where you live, and uh, you know it'll be fun. He was coming back before July. Uh, I wasn't sure when, but I mean, I, I felt like everything just made sense. You know, he was he lives here. He's around here. Um, you know, he had a great relationship with everybody that's here. And so it just made sense. Do you think that before the incidents, or do you think that before all the recent visits of other teams? That's what we say all the time. Did you think that he was on his way here until those incidents in the summer or before the most recent visiting other teams and the things he did? Uh, I thought there was a good chance that he was going to come back, um, you know, prior to the incident that happened. Um, and then I think, like every team, I think they were just trying to figure out everything after that. So um, at that point, you just make the best decision for for yourself. Uh, LeBron said that uh, on Monday nights that the team out in the contracts. That's dope. <laughs> uh, I don't know. He would have been a big target. Uh, I would have definitely just if I got to the if I got in, uh, 
in the red zone, I would have just threw it up and let him use that 40-something inch vert to go catch the ball. But, you know, him being that big also, you know, that's a lot of area for somebody to hit. And so I think uh, I watched that interview. One of the reasons why he, he stopped playing football was because he kept getting hit. And, you know, basketball, they don't, you don't get hit in basketball. It's a nice life over there. <laughs> do, you, do you think uh, other teams are copying um, what Indianapolis had success-wise screen game? Seems like teams are having success. I mean, every team. I think every team has screens in their in their repertoire. So um, I don't know if they're copying it, but I think if uh, you watch the way we've played screens the last few games, if you had them, I definitely feel like they're going to go up on your play call. So um, it's something that I felt we did a better job in the second half of the Vikings game playing, but. Until we knit that in the butt, um, they're going to get very creative with this, the screens, especially this team. This team has fullback screens, running back screens, tight end screens. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they brought the, the young guy back there into the QB screen. So we will see screens this game, and we'll be ready for them. From your perspective, what, what have been the biggest issues defending screens? Um, I think a lot of it is um, – the way they, they kind of set it up is they'll do a play pass. And when you do a play pass, it's designed for it to get the underneath defenders to come up a little bit. And when you get them to come up, you have to panic out. And as your defenders are panicking out to get underneath the, the routes that are happening, that's why that's when they're setting up the screen. And so um, sometimes, especially uh, one of those screens to the field, uh, when you set it up, it's only it's like four guys, four linemen against like maybe two guys. You know, So sometimes you're outnumbered. So, the best way is to make sure you read it faster, be instinctive on it, and uh, take a chance. How much does not having KJ impact your guys' ability? Because that was what he was best known for. Obviously. Yeah, KJ was a screen master. Um, but a lot of uh, you know KJ screens, he just over time got really good at seeing them. And so he almost, I felt like, discouraged the screens his direction for the most part. Um, and a lot of the screens that happen come on that backside, which is where KJ was sitting. And so, you know, you get a intelligent, intelligent guy like that, and that's where you want to go. You know, he's going to find that every time. Thank you, Bob. Cool. Appreciate it.